noi cominciamo puntuali perché dobbiamo finire puntuali e ci teniamo a non sprecare neanche un minuto di questa, di questa preziosa ora. Il nostro ospite questa mattina è, una delle, è il vignettista, eh, il cartoonist della, della primavera araba, eh, Khalid, Khalid Albaid, eh, ed è un onore averlo qua perché dopo aver per tanto tempo guardato eh, su Facebook e su tutte le principali riviste, insomma su tante riviste del mondo, mi viene in mente The Nation, Atlantic, Time Magazine, New York Times, eh, le, sue, le sue vignette, finalmente possiamo chiacchierare e capire come, eh, come sono nate. Eh, Khalid è sudanese ma eh, vive e lavora in quello che insomma, è il punto più vitale, probabilmente più, più energetico del, del mondo arabo negli ultimi anni, che è Doha, eh, in, eh, in Qatar. Eh, ci facciamo raccontare da lui come ha iniziato, io voglio farvi soltanto un... Vi, vi faccio soltanto un breve riassunto appunto, lui disegna questi eh, cartoons che poi vedrete passare, sul, uh, vedrete passare sul, uh, sullo schermo, ha cercato per tanto tempo di farseli pubblicare da, dai giornali principali del mondo arabo e non ci è riuscito, e poi a un certo punto ha deciso che faceva da solo, da solo e eh, si è rivolto a internet, ha creato questa pagina internet che si chiama appunto uh, Cartoon, da Khartoum che è la sua città natale e Khartoum eh, come vignetta che è eh, lentamente eh, esplosa perché con, eh, con i suoi disegni ha cominciato a raccontare quello che stava succedendo nel mondo arabo prima del eh, dell'inizio del, dell della rivoluzione araba e poi seguendone eh, tutta quanta l'evoluzione. Eh, non c'è bisogno che io vi dica quanto delicato è il lavoro di un cartoonist, di qualcuno che fa vignette eh, nel mondo arabo. Uh, parleremo poi dopo di Charlie Hebdo e del, di, di tutto quello che questo ha significato per, uh, per lui e per chi fa il suo lavoro uh, però per prima cosa voglio chiedere a lui se ci racconta come ha iniziato a fare questo lavoro e come è diventato quello che è appunto i suoi disegni eh, quando c'è stato quei meravigliosi 18 giorni Uh, al Cairo, a Tahrir Square, quando veramente sembrava che la speranza si fosse tramutata, tramutata in realtà, i suoi disegni erano stati trasformati in stencil, che non so se sapete cosa sono, ma sono questa specie di, 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 di forme che vengono riprodotte dappertutto, per cui i disegni di Calida erano ovunque, intorno a Tahrir, in tutte le piazze dell'Egitto. Uh, è, è veramente diventato colui che esprimeva quello che, che, che pensavano i ragazzi in... Uh, in, uh, in piazza. Allora, com come ci sei arrivato? Come com hai iniziato a, a, a disegnare e poi come hai fatto a diventare la matita delle rivoluzioni? And that's the, questa è l'ultima cosa che ti chiedo in italiano, adesso parliamo da qui in avanti, cominciamo a parlare in inglese, è più facile per noi. Assalamu alaikum, hello everybody. Uh, first of all, I just want to say that I'm very happy to be here. Um, all of this from a Facebook page, so. <laughs> um, as Francesca said, uh, I was always into art. I really liked um, art, and, and, and um, I, was, I left my country, Sudan. My father was a diplomat. I was born in Romania. And uh, when the Islamic Revolution happened in Sudan in uh, 1989, a lot of intellectuals, government officials, had to leave um, or, you know, not find work or sometimes, of course, uh, get killed. So we, uh, we left and uh, ended up in Doha. So for me, politics was always... Um, the reason why I don't have a home, why I lost my house, why I don't live with my family. And uh, it was very interesting for me to, 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 um, that we were just told that we stay away from politics, stay away from what the leaders say, stay away from all of that if you want to survive and if you want you know, your life to be normal, if you want to go to college and if you know, just have a normal life, basically. Uh, so cartoons for me were, were, was, was uh, a perfect way to combine these two things, which are art and, and um, politics. Um, so growing up, 
I, uh, I discovered these two magazines that uh, my father used to uh, read all the time. There are two Egyptian political-based cartoon magazines. One is called Sabah al-Khair, the other one is called Rose al-Yusuf, which are really old and respected newspapers, and they're based, in car based on, on, on cartoons. So they're kind of like the Arabic you know, New Yorker. Um, so I loved it. I loved how brave they were, and I loved how they, they talked about subjects and, and that were current and we were supposed to talk about, but they didn't talk about it directly. They talked about, they, you know, they, they beat up on the bush, basically, because you know, it's either that or they will shut down the, the whole publication. So it was a very smart way to talk about what we wanted to talk about. And uh, so I started doing it when, when I was in university and so on. And I really wanted to get published, and I went to you know, a lot of uh, newspapers everywhere uh, t trying to publish my work. I, sometimes I asked them, I was like, I don't even, you know, I don't, I don't want the money, just try to publish, just try to get some exposure. Same thing, nothing happened. Uh, and this was around you know, 2009, 2010. And at, cer at a certain point, I got kicked out of an o editor's office once. He was like, these are not cartoons, you know, these, because my work is a bit uh, different, it's a bit graphic, and I, I, uh, you know, I, try to I try to speak to people my age, my generation. Um, so he was, he was always, there were, you know, like the editor was like, the, you know, you don't have speech bubbles, where are the speech bubbles? You know, <laughs> he was very upset about that. I was like, I don't use speech bubbles, man, it's just a different kind of... So it was it was just that age gap that 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 that's still happening in the, in the Middle East that um you know the, the people in offices are are certain age group and everybody is under twenty five or under thirty and and every you know most people are unemployed and 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 frustrated. Uh, and it was all because of that age gap, because they don't understand where we're coming from, they don't understand the internet, they don't understand what we're trying to do, they don't understand the pop culture that we grew up with. So um, at that point, I was like, okay, so I, I need to take it to the next step, and this is what happened. Just like a lot of artists and a lot of creatives, uh, writers, bloggers, I, uh, at that time, I w we went on the internet. I started my Facebook page, and, 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 and it just it took, off, it took off from there. Io spero che riusciamo a vedere qualcuna delle vignette. Abbiamo provato a scaricarle prima, non so se riusciamo a, a mandarle sullo, sullo schermo. I'm just asking for the cartoons yeah. to be shown. Uh, so what I want you to ask you, I don't want to go to the, into the old debate where these Twitter revolutions or Facebook revolutions or not, but as we discussed before in front of our coffee, <laughs> social media had an impact had a role in these uh, uh, in these uh, revolutions but it still has a very important role when we are talking about freedom of expression in the middle east young people and what they think because it's this is still the platform where they express their ideas as your story shows so what's the role of the of the internet right now in this phase which is not very good for the arab spring let's call it yeah um Basically, the internet is our only escape. We, there is, there, after the Arab Spring, uh, the leaders, you know, the governments, realized um, the, that in the importance of the, of, the, of the internet. And this is where the young people wanted, w were talking, and this is most why most of these revolutions started. So, they, they even invaded the internet as well, but at the same time, uh, there's, there was a lot of young people that started new publications online in Egypt and in Tunis and in you know, m most, most of the uh, uh, Arab countries, and they, su they supported the young people and, uh, that, that are trying to, to do different things and, and, and trying to speak their mind, basically. And because we, we seriously didn't have anywhere else to go, and that's why the arts were the first thing to explode with the Arab Spring. Graffiti was everywhere, in, in Egypt, in Tunisia, in Sudan, in Yemen, in Syria, everywhere. And it's not because, you know, they liked graffiti. It was because they were so, we were so oppressed that we wanted to write how we feel on walls. We wanted to say that we're, we broke the fear, you know. And this is, and, and this is what made most people actually go out and go to these protests because they, 
they saw that you know people in Libya were talking against Gaddafi with with huge fonts on on uh, sentences on 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 the walls, and that never happened. You can never do that before. So this is what gave people courage to come out and 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 and, and do these things, and uh, you know, and now of course with with uh, the decline of hope of, of what's happening in in in, in the region. Still, the internet is the only place that we have. Uh, you know, it's it's less censored, but every day, you know, as you see in Turkey, of course, you know, the, the, with the, with the, they're trying to say, uh, stop Twitter and Instagram and, and social media. Twi uh, uh, tweets are, are are getting arrested, you know, in 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 in, in the in the Gulf and uh, Emirates and in Kuwait, and it's it just it keeps happening, and this is and this is kind of. It's our only escape. Uh, this is this is the this is the cartoon that got graffitied in Tahrir Square and in, and in Beirut before the fall of Mubarak. So it actually says Masr, which is Egypt in uh, in in Arabic. But when when you use the things in red, the changes the pronunciation of the Arabic word to Musr, which means is insisting. And that was before he stepped down. Um, so. It, you know, it's, it's, it's things like this that created this network of creatives around around the Arab world. So I was working with graffiti artists in Yemen. I was working with uh, uh, bloggers in Syria. We were all working together and through the internet, through Facebook, through Twitter, we all worked together and we still have that network and, and a lot of people went on and did really great, amazing things. Uh, but yes, you know, the internet is still our only escape, unfortunately, because now the people are, are are scared because of what happened during these revolutions in Syria and 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 um, in Libya. The, you know, they they th the governments are telling them if you go out, if you listen to these young kids, and and their you know wild hope and expectations, this is what's going to happen. The world, the the the, the country is going to be torn into pieces. Do you want this or do you want us? So now, again. You know the older generation fails us again, and we have nowhere else but the internet to just talk to each other and try to do something positive again. So you have been called one of the artists of the Arab Spring, uh, but what I wanted to ask you is, how can you do a revolution with a pen or a pencil, or in your case, it's a pencil and a computer because you work with yeah. both of them. I mean, it's like how revolutionary can a cartoon be? What kind of impact do you see when you publish these cartoons? Um, first of all, I, I, you know, I just draw. <laughs> People died in the street. I <laughs> it's a uh, that's all we got. <laughs> but it works because, uh, I mean, it's like if you get published all over the world and if <laughs> your cartoons. <laughs> I mean, this is very emotional because we were having a, a coffee before with, uh, with a friend from, from Bahrain who is now in London. And we were talking about prisons and the way people got uh, tortured in Bahrain, uh, in Yemen, uh, in Egypt. Uh, and um, so we were just talking, uh, and Khalid just told me, I know this can happen to me anytime. I mean, anytime I go back to Sudan, I know I can be arrested and disappear in a jail. and. Uh, and be tortured, so, and I told him, so I was like, why do you go back? <laughs> and he said, but I have to go back, because that's my country, and uh, this is what I do. I mean, so each, p I think each one can, tries to fight his own battle in his way, and I think you're doing great. <coughs> so, but being a cartoonist in the Arab world is not easy, as the Shirley Hebdo story showed us. There are boundaries that yeah. you cannot you cannot pass. So what's what's the red line? Where where do you stop? I mean, it's like, where is the the border between the message that you want to send and how 
and what you can do to send it? Um, well, first of all, you know, with with um, sorry, with with uh, with cartoons, it's 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 um, you always have to keep pushing the limits. You always have to keep pushing uh, the envelope, and and uh, so there's no there's no limit actually. But it's all about how how you talk about it, and in, and and in the Arab and Muslim world, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, there's a lot of borders, like social borders. Uh, there's a lot of uh, things that you need to, um, th you know, th think about before you publish anything or before you say anything, because it could turn from, it could turn your message, it could redirect your message. So if I'm if I'm talking about something really important, but I draw a, a, a naked woman, for example, the whole conversation is going to be about the naked woman. It's not going to be about the 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 message that I want to talk about. So for me to deliver my message, I have to try to bridge that gap, even though, you know, okay, I'm censoring myself, I'm, uh, this is not what I'm trying to do, but at the same time, it's not about me. It's about delivering this message. It's not about my uh, power of, you know, I want, I want to do this, I don't care what anybody else thinks. No, I do care about what everybody else thinks because it's wh why I'm doing this for, is because I want to change mindsets. Yeah, and if, and if you keep challenging that in the wrong way, then you're totally not, you're not you're not getting your message through, and and this is this is what we are. We're 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 trying to say that yes, things are you know things are th th this this is this so and so is wrong. But I'm trying to tell it to uh, a, a certain group of people in a way that they will understand it, that in a way that they will appreciate it and not be offended. Because if I'm offended, then who am I talking to? Myself. You know, it's it's kind of it doesn't it doesn't make sense, and. You know, it's, and this is and this is the problem with our governments is that they're talking to themselves. So how am I different than 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 them? So for us, we need to look at this. You know, for me, before I do a cartoon or before any of the other uh, cartoonists do anything, we we put a lot of things with thought to it because first of all, we need to avoid getting arrested. We need to avoid our you know our family being uh, whatever happens uh, to it. We need to avoid uh, the people being angry we need to uh, there's a lot of things that you need to avoid for you to 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 say a s certain something so for us i think you know i think arab cartoonists and muslim cartoonists are way more creative because we don't talk about everything directly we talk about it indirectly we try as much as i can you know i personally try as much as i can to be as, as simple as possible because i work on social media and uh, you know i'm in the mercy of this like i'm in the mercy of a scroll you know uh, this is whatever so they're just going to look at something else so i just i try to be very efficient and try to to talk, to talk about certain subjects i try to push the envelope i talk about religion i talk about sexuality i talk about human rights i talk about women rights i talk about everything that i can talk about but i talk about it in a way that bridges the gap between me and the viewer, between me and the person that I want to deliver this message to, right? And the, and the other great thing about talking on social media is that you see the conversation. You see, you see what's happening. People talk to each other. People have a conversation. People that will not have a conversation in normal circumstances in the Arab world will have a conversation online. So a Muslim Brotherhood person will talk to a liberal person to talk to a communist, will talk to uh, an atheist. Everybody will talk. Uh, you know, it's, it's not going to be pretty at the beginning, definitely. Everybody will swear at me, they'll swear at each other. But you can tell later on that they become friends and they talk to each other. And this is what we want to do at the end. We want to create this dialogue. We don't want to just, you know, widen it and, 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 and make it worse. Talking about dialogue, uh, I will have to ask you something that I'm sure everybody asks you all the times. Because, I mean, the night of the Charlie Hebdo attack, I was just zapping on TV, it was all over. It was like Al Jazeera, CNN, BBC. I mean, it was always your face. You were talking. I mean, I was like, so can I ask you to share your thoughts about what happened that morning in Paris with, with us today? I mean, what was your point of view? What was your, your feeling as a cartoonist with other cartoonists being targeted, but at the same time, cartoonists who did something very different from what you do? I mean, you explained yeah. us what's, what's the border. They completely forgot it. Yeah. Um, I, w I was watching uh, Al Jazeera and uh, it when, when, I, when I saw that, I was very 
sad and scared because this could have been any of my friends. This could have been us. And, 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 and for, you know, reasons way less than drawing a profit, you know, <laughs> they could just kill us for anything, really. Uh, so I was very shocked that it, it happened after all these years. I was like, why now? You know, people forgot about this and we moved on. But at the same time, I was just worried about the millions of families, that Muslim families and Arab families that live in, that live in Europe. And this is how people are going to look at them again. And it's going to be you know, the whole post 9-11 effect all over again. Uh, so I, you know, five minutes after watching the news, I, I drew a cartoon. And it, 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 it went viral. And it was basically the world on one side and then the, the terrorist on one side and the world is telling and you know a Muslim person in the middle and the world is telling this person that you're with the terrorists and then the terrorists are telling the world the, the Muslim person that you're with the infidels so and and the person in the middle is just saying I'm just a Muslim I have nothing to do with this at all and I was just upset that again we're going to you know 1.6 Muslim people are going to be blamed for what three idiots did. And these guys, uh, I personally believe that it's not a, th their fight was not a fight of, for freedom of speech or against freedom of speech or whatever. It w they just wanted to, to do something. They just wanted to kill somebody. If they didn't do Charlie Abdo, they would have killed somebody else. And we see this every day. We are the biggest victims of terrorism in the Arab world. We, 200 people die daily on the news and it's just a number you know look at what happened in kenya last week that was you know so we we live this on daily basis we are the biggest victim of this uh you know i i i don't agree with 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 uh charlie Hebdo. i i think i that's not how i work and i just i can't i it's, i think it's just very vulgar i can't you know i i i don't read french but i just i don't think it's funny but anyways so um and for them, it's just about being funny, and that's the difference, you know. Uh, cartoonists in their world, we're, we don't do things to be funny. We do things to change situations, you know. Everybody can make a joke. Everybody can make a gag, but it's what, what, are, you, what are you trying to deliver? What are you accomplishing with this cartoon? What, what are you risking your life for? This is the question that I, my family asks me every day. Um, so, but of course, you know, everybody has the right to do whatever they want. But again, you know, it, 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 it has to be without bias and it has to be, you know, not hypocritical and it has to, it, and, and for me, I'm, I'm doing this and I'm, you know, thousands of artists and graffiti artists are risking their lives daily to, to bridge that gap between East and West, between, you know, the Muslim world and the rest and even talking, trying to talk to even the, the young kids who are joining ISIS by, the, the the tens and, and hundreds every day, so this is this is what we're trying to do, and and that's my that's my difference with 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 Charlie Hebdo. But of course that day, I was like the token Muslim guy talking on every channel, trying to say that the, you know this there's 1.6 million Muslims, and three people did this. Just please remember that you know your Arab Muslim neighbor has nothing to do with this. He does not think the same way. Not everybody blew up. Uh, not everybody killed these cartoonists and, and you know and and uh, scream that they they revenge to the prophet we all saw this and and if you notice that in 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 in, in um, when the the protests for ha the, the protests against the cartoonists first happened it happened in countries that are already under turmoil they were already in 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 there were already war zones you know it happened in pakistan and afghanistan and sudan so con in libya so these, these people are, are already affected. They're, you know, they don't have the right education. They don't have the right health care. They, they don't have basic needs. But if you look at the rest of the Arab world, like the, the GCC area, like you know, UAE, Qatar, Saudi, Saudi, you know, the most religious country in the world, uh, not in a good way, they, they didn't do anything. Nobody burned anything. Nobody killed anybody. You know? it's, 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 so it's these countries that are already under turmoil. And for them, what I want to explain is that for most of these people in, 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 you know, in, uh, in, in these countries that are already under war, and for most Muslims, we don't have any heroes. We grew up without heroes. We don't have any heroes. We, we were never told that 
you could be president one day. Because if, <laughs> if your father tells you that, if somebody hears him, he could go to jail. Like, what are you trying to say? That the president is not going to be here 30 years from now? You know, we're, you know. So it's, 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 it, we don't grow up with heroes. We don't have any heroes. So for most people who lack education, who lack, you know, a lot of, a lot of you know, basic things in life, the prophet, whether you, you know, think it's right or wrong, is the only hero that they have. It's the only righteous person that they have. And for them, the West is the person, is, is, is the, are the people who supported the dictatorships that took these things from them, that took education from them, that took their land from them, that took their oil from them. Who supported Saddam? Who supported Bin Ali? Who supported uh, 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 Saleh in Yemen? It's, it's the West. Right? So for them, the West is supporting these people that, 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 that are taking everything away from us. And we took that. And they took the oil in Iraq. 200, what, how many people? 2 million people died in Iraq until now or something? 20 million, something crazy like that. So for them, the only person that they have left is this person. That's it. They don't have anybody else. There's no heroes. Everybody is either a traitor or, you know, no, there's no heroes. So th for them, this is the only thing that they have left and they keep attacking it, right? So it's, it's, you know, I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong or whatever, but I'm just telling you this is, this is how, basically how most people feel, and especially like the, 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 the majority of people who don't have anything else, you know? Yes, I, I wanna go back to something that you said when you said uh, it could have been one of us or, I mean, we risk our life. Uh, I want to say that one of your idols was called uh, Najid Ali, if my pronunciation is correct. He was a Palestinian cartoonist uh, who got killed in Europe yeah. because in of in London because of his cartoons. And uh, another one of your idols, or my idols as well, is called Mr. Ali, Ali Terzab, Persad, yes. who is a Syrian cartoonist who was kidnapped and his hands were broken. He is 66 years old. Is they kidnapped him and broke his fingers. They broke his fingers, uh, and uh, there was the le they let him alive, but that was the message, you cannot draw cartoons anymore. Uh, and then when he was released, uh, he escaped from Syria, and now he lives in exile, and he keeps on drawing cartoons. But that's, that's how, I mean, uh, it's not a fairy game to be a cartoonist in the Arab world. So, I mean, what... Do, do you feel this pressure every day? You were talking, you, were, you told me before, it's like each time I do something and I post it on Facebook, I have a phone call from my mom <laughs> or my dad. It's like, wh what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's, as I said, you know, I, um, it's something that I, I need to do. But is it safe? Uh, uh, I don't think so, no. But it's the least I can do, you know. As I said, people died in the squares. People died for change, young kids. And, you know, I'm just, I'm just drawing. That's the least I can do. So it's, it's, it's a very difficult situation, and not only for cartoonists or for journalists. It's, it's a very situation. It's a very difficult situation for people as a whole. Because, you know, in a lot of places, you lack basic human rights. Anybody w w can do anything to you at any given time. You don't know. Right. So we had in, in Sudan, we had an incident where a, a, a journalist, a respected young woman was kidnapped from her office in front of everyone by 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 the secret police, jailed for three days, tortured, shaved her head and threw her in her neighborhood. So if that's not bullying, I don't know what that is. You know, and, and, and nobody said anything, and you can't say anything because the same thing could happen to you, could happen to your kids, and, and so on. So, you know, there's a, a lot of people risking their life and a lot of people doing amazing things. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm lucky that I am here right now and, and you guys are listening to this, and um, hopefully that you'll get to change your mindsets about certain things, but there is thousands of me that you will never hear of.
I want to talk about the main subject of the conversation when you talk about the Muslim world in the last month, unfortunately, which is ISIS or Daesh or whatever. I mean, it's like we, we all know about them. But what many people don't know is that there is a lot of fun make, made out of ISIS uh, online. I mean, if you should just search online for parodies, you will find videos which end up with people dancing in a disco with a uh, Madonna soundtrack or like people showing al-Baghdadi getting drunk and looking for Western girls. I mean, so there is a lot of this and uh, it's, it is growing. I mean, it's more and more. Uh, what's what's the reason behind this? I mean, is that are they so funny, or I mean, what's the message that people are trying to send with these cartoons, videos, and uh, I saw soap operas about ISIS. I mean, there is everything. Um, see, the problem is that we're. I think a lot of these, a lot of these videos, and a lot of these cartoons, and. They're they're trying to make you know they, there's like a lot of young people joining their you know the ISIS and um, we're trying to show them that this is this is not right. I mean look look at what they're doing because at the end you know um, satire is 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 just you know an, an extreme look at the truth mm -hmm. you know so it it's it's. It, it is happening. What they're doing is 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 is, is terrible, and it's it's very unfortunate, and it hurts all of us. And it, uh, so, uh, as Muslims, this is, <laughs> you know, we look at we look at these videos and we're we're shocked. Like, where where does this come from? You know, so, and the si the situation in the region as a whole, you know, we have this saying in in in, in Arabic. I, I said I told you earlier. Sharul baliyuti ma yuthek, which means you know the the worst things become there's nothing to do but laugh you know and this is so true in the middle east that you know we we there's a joke about everything you know we, we and 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 the worst the situation is you know the more jokes there are right so and egypt was before the fall of mubarak was known to be like a you know a, a very funny country everybody everybody has a joke to tell you at any time this is this how and this is how you know the country is really going bad you know mm -hmm. if there's a lot of joking you know this is this is the situation is really bad and it's and this is it with ISIS right now because the situation is really really bad so people you know this is this is the only way that can express themselves and this is the only way that we can get to these these young kids that they're recruiting because most of these kids will not read the Guardian or the New York Times or you know even the official papers and Th they will not read these things, you know, because, you know, they go to the mosque and then, you know, the imam will tell them certain things. They, they go to the, they, they try to leave the country. They can't leave the country because, you know, they can't get a visa because they're Muslim, because their country is next to whatever. So it's, th they have no escape. So their escape, again, you know, is the internet. So this is the only place that we can actually convince those kids that this is wrong. This is, this is, this is not how, you know, Islam is. This is not how, uh, you're supposed to think about this, you know, so w yes, we say it in a funny way, but it's not a funny situation and you know I, I don't think my cartoons are funny. I mean, they're just they're just a reflection of what's going on I'm just trying to say what's going on, but it's, it's satire is r literally the only way that we can talk to these kids and talk talk to you know talk to these people but uh, I mean, I, I read an interview and you say that you're still hopeful for the region. I mean, even if the hope that the Arab Spring generated it somehow gone. Um, I mean, is there still hope? I mean, what, what do you have to expect for the future? What's your idea? I mean, how do you see young people? How do you see the situation right now? I mean, are we, are we just back to where we were before or is there still something that maybe in the future is gonna come back? Uh, so, you know, the, the, the Arab Spring is hope, right? It still is hope because I think the the last four years, it started in 2011, and until now, this is the this is the um, to com to be to if you compare it to the history of the region, which was like the last 200 years of foreign occupation, and uh, uh, you know, as I said, you know, lack of education, lack of human rights, lack of this, lack of this. You know, we're we're very new at this. Mm -hmm. We don't know what we're doing. So 
it's not that we're back to 2011 or before 2011. We didn't move. It didn't start yet. We're, this, is just, this is just a spark to, for things to work better, to, for things to happen, people to realize what's going on. And, you know, even in Europe, it, 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 it took uh, the French Revolution, I don't know, like 90 years until it actually became, you know, the mother of democracy and all of it. But before that, it was a bloodbath. You know, everybody killed everybody. So this is, this is what happens. You can't expect people to just be civilized right after they've been treated like animals for 200 years, you know? It, it, it doesn't work like that. So for things to settle, it will take time. And uh, if I'm hopeful, yes, I'm hopeful. And I'll keep being hopeful because, as I said, we have nothing else. Noi abbiamo ancora 15 minuti, però io vorrei aprire a voi la... I'm going to open the floor to questions, if it's okay. Se, se c'è qualcuno che vuole chiedere qualcosa uh, a Khalid, c'è un, un microfono che gira, altrimenti continuo io, ma penso che sia giusto dare anche a voi. Thank you. Um, you stressed very much the fact that internet is what you had. Um, from the Western part, uh, point of view, I sometimes had the feeling that we put too much uh, the, the, the distress of what internet was doing during the, the Arab Spring. Um, you said, I mean, kids, we, we have this, um, this media to, to, to show things to kids and so on, but don't you think that in countries like the one you're from, uh, internet is not as spread as it is? here, so, so, so do you think that Westerners, uh, or here in Europe, uh, media especially, journalists, um, don't understand exactly what the internet means in your country, or how spread it is? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the funny thing is when, when um, you're, you're absolutely right, like the internet is everywhere. You know, people, people don't even know if they have money to have lunch, but everybody has like, a Samsung with internet on it, you know? So, and, 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 and these companies really control the economy now. Like if you go to Sudan, you go to like these, you know, uh, uh, areas outside Khartoum and you, there's nothing, there's not even like proper houses, but you see a big billboard with like, you know, nice looking woman, you know, light skinned of course and everything. And with like, with talking on the phone, you know, like, you know, buy this for internet for like one pound for a month. You know, so it's this, literally everybody's online and, and the Internet and, and social media, WhatsApp application, uh, Facebook, this 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 became their only source of news. Citizen journalism became their only source of news because nobody trusts the newspapers anymore. Because if you look at the cover of a newspaper from today and you look at the news, the cover of a newspaper from 20 years ago is going to be saying the same thing. The great, the great leader met uh, the great leader of other country and everything is great, we're all happy, everything is great. You know, this is exactly what they say. So, it, so social media became the news. So people, this is what people look at. And, and the internet is very, very spread, yes. Not everybody has it, yes, but this is, it became a necessity, you know, for you, for you, to, for you to, 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 to join like the rest of the world, right? And, um, you know, it's very funny because I think there's like uh, uh, a generation gap. Like now my mom is on, you know, is on Facebook and, you know, she's like, oh, did you see the, you know, it's like she, she just reads everything and she believes everything. You know, it's, uh, now we kind of have a filter of what to believe and what not to. But like, the, you know, the, like my mother's generation, because they just joined and, and it's just like an information boom to them. They, they you know, just, she just reads everything. She's on her phone the whole time. You know, <laughs> she's worse than, you know, a 16-year-old girl. So it's, it's, it's it, yes, it's, you know, the, the internet is very, very uh, effective now in, in the region, definitely. Do you have any, um, are any mainstream media that is willing to publish your work yet, or is it just on the internet, and do you have any leadership in the Middle East that you respect or think is is going to make a difference after the Arab Spring? Um, I, I basically work you know, in, in reverse of, of uh, I think, other cartoonists. I, I, I like the fact that I'm independent. 
then and you know just because I'm in Qatar, everybody thinks I work for Al Jazeera, and I and I don't and I refuse to work for Al Jazeera. Not because I'm I'm against them or anything. Can, you know they were they were they're heroes in a, at a, if you look at them at a certain point of view because you know they were the only Arabic channel or you know Arabic network that actually was giving alternative news and you know look at AJ Plus look at AJ English I I really respect what they're doing but at the same time I really uh, I really want to stay independent because I don't I I want to be close to what the street is saying what what like my generation is saying what younger generations are saying about the political situation not what my editor is telling me to do and uh, I, I I hope I can keep it that way I'm not making a lot of money but you know I uh, you know surprise you got to pay I guess um, if there is any anybody that I respect <laughs> in, in 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 the region I don't know. I mean, I live in Qatar, and it's it's a, it's a very special case, I guess. You know, there's good and bad. But what I respect about Qatar, and I was talking to Francesca about this uh, this morning, that they're young, and they're they're close. I mean, if you look at any leader in the Arab world, nobody's less than 65 years old or 70 years old, and they've been in power for at least 20 years. You know, so they're so far removed from the young generation that it's 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 they they live in a different world. You know. But in Qatar, like the the the, the prince now uh, is thirty five years old. His younger sister, who's uh, uh, you know she's in charge of the arts and culture scene, she's thirty three years old. And th these people are super rich, super educated, and they're trying to change the country. They're trying to do a lot of new things. Of course, there's a lot of negative things that are happening. But you know, how old is this country, anyways? You know. So it's it's a young country that's trying to do something different, and I really I really respect that. I really respect that, and, and in, especially in terms of education and 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 arts and culture and stuff. And I look at them, and I wish the rest of the Arab world will actually, the royal families and the governments will spend their money on arts and culture and on education as much as Qatar is trying to do. You know, maybe they have negative points and other things, but when it comes to education and arts and culture, it's it's amazing what they're doing right now. Thanks. Um, why are you laughing? Um, I wondered, uh, given the invitation that you had to come here and speak to a group of European journalists, in your mind when you were coming, what was the one message you thought, I need to make sure I say this to them? I just, I just wanted to be real. You know, I just wanted I just wanted to 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 reflect the situation as how it is, and uh, not be a, a propagandist and basically not be what they want me to to you know what they would like to hear. For example, like yes, I'm with freedom of speech, but I, and I love Charlie Hebdo, and you know, no, I don't. I don't like Charlie Hebdo, and I don't like what they did, and but I do condemn what happened, and this is uh, and because I think it's their right to say it, of course. Uh, but yeah, I was I was just trying to be really truthful and 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 really honest and try to reflect the situation as you know how m most I think most people feel like in in our part of the world, which you know people in Europe and in America don't really get to hear that much. Um, and again, you know, it's because we n we. We know how the West thinks. We 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 watch your TV. We know your languages, which is scary. We're stalking you. Uh, we we you know we know a lot about you. We know your history. We study your history. But you don't know anything about us. So it's it's really it's 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 really um, a sad situation. And and this reflects also in in in, in cartoons and, and 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 media and film and. A lot of things. There's a really nice book called Real Bad Arabs, uh, real like as in movie real, and it just shows how Arabs and Muslims are are uh, portrayed in 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 Western um, movies and media. So th this is exactly what I'm trying to um, trying to reflect. And uh, you know, my mother tongue is Arabic, but I do most of my cartoons in English because I want to bridge that gap. I want you to understand where we're coming from. I want you to understand that 
we all grew up watching the same TV. We all grew up with the same everything. Um, so you know, this is this is this is this is what I'm trying to do. And and part of the problem, especially when it comes to cartoon, like Western cartoonists, cartoonists, is that they feed into that stereotype of like the Hollywood, the Hollywood bad guy. You know, like if they if they have to, because of course they have deadlines and they have a job to do, and that's exactly why I want to stay independent. Um, you know, they have a deadline and they have to talk about whatever. You know, the Islamic something. So they, you know, the the image that they will do is, you know, an angry man with a beard screaming Allahu Akbar. So this is this is instantly what you will see. You know, a woman in a burqa. Oh, she must be oppressed. Her husband must be like slapping her every day. So it's just it's just things like that that it, it will you know if you draw them if you see them constantly. This is what you will think, and this is this will this image will be stuck in your mind, and this is what I'm this is what I'm trying to. It, it's, uh, you know, in some cases, of course, it's true, but not all the time. You know, uh, so it's it's all about feeding into that stereotype that really angers the 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 the, the Arab and the Muslim world. It's that stereotype that you 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 know expect the whole. You know, it's like yesterday, like Africa is a country. You know, you speak African. You know, it's, it's, it's things like that. You know, and the West is supposed to be the educated part of the world. You know, <laughs> and. It, you know, it's just things like that. I just, I really just want to, I just want to say that we're all the same. You know, it's, it's different cultures, but we're all human. We're all the same. We all want to live in peace and we all want to have education and human rights. And that's, that's, we're, we're all the same. Abbiamo tempo per un'ultima domanda, se, se c'è qualcuno che vuole farla, se no la faccio io. Ok, so it's gonna be, I'm going to have the honor of the last question. <laughs> And I want to ask you, how do you choose uh, your subjects? I mean, how does your cartoon start in your mind and then how do you realize it um, how do you make it real because i know that you use the pencil but mm -hmm. also the the computer so it's a very it's a very new way of uh, of creating a cartoon uh you mean like the process of how yeah I make the a process okay. from from the idea the subject to then when i see it okay. on facebook and then when i open internazionale and i find it printed on an italian news magazine All right, so I, I have a really bad memory. I'm like Nemo from Finding Nemo. <laughs> no, Dora, sorry, from Dora. See, there you go. So, <laughs> so I, I, uh, I have a lot of sketchbooks all the time. So I have a sketchbook next to my bed, a sketchbook in my car, a sketchbook in the bathroom, everywhere. And uh, whenever I get an idea, I just write it down or I sketch it. And uh, then I start working on it. And of course, you know, after uh, censorship and after uh, conversation with my... Uh, <laughs> my advisor, my mother. Uh, you know, like you're definitely going to get killed for this one. <laughs> so uh, then I, I start working on it, try to you know, visualize it. And again, because you know, you, I, I work on social media, and most people view social media on, on their mobile, so everything has to be very obvious. Like, you know, it's just, it's, uh, I, I hope that you just get it very simply and get it straight away. Um, so after that, I just you know sit on the computer and I draw it out, and uh, you and the wording has to be you have to think about the wording a lot, and uh, you, you know you rephrase and rephrase until it uh, until it comes out that I am not really offending anybody and I'm not pointing fingers at anyone, and um, you know and then you and then you post it and then the war starts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it's it's uh, and you know you post it on I post it on Facebook, post it on Instagram, post it on Twitter, post it on Tumblr, post it on. Uh, so it's it's just like a whole process of 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 of, of just doing that and then just following up the conversation on on each uh, uh, platform. But uh, yeah, a lot of sketchbooks. Beh, forse con questo possiamo concludere and uh, we really thank you very much for being here and for sharing uh, your work with us. And we hope to see you back uh, 
in Italy very soon. Uh, you th you're going to have another conference here tomorrow, yeah. but then we hope to see you back here. Inshallah. Very soon. Thank you very much Inshallah. for having me. Thank you very much for listening.